Hey everyone, it's Sarah, and today I'm talking about how to help your dog through separation anxiety and separation-related problems. Earlier this week, I was on a news station, Good Day Charlotte with Fox 46, to give specific tips to help people whose dogs are panicking when they leave the house and exhibiting very destructive behaviors that are really concerning. Now, unfortunately, news segments are really short, so I crammed a ton of information in that little three-minute segment that we had, and I got a lot of feedback about, you need more information. Can you expand on some of these things that will help my dog? So that's the purpose of this video today, is that we're gonna talk about some of the things that I went over in the news clip and how you can help your dog if they're struggling with separation anxiety or a separation related problem. Now stick around to the end of the video as well because I'm gonna to talk to you about a research study, a national study that I'm getting ready to conduct in the fall of 2020, if you're watching this video, that you can get involved with. It's free to get involved and it's something that could help provide some really incredible data so that we can help more and more dog owners and dogs that are suffering from separation anxiety and separation related problems. All right, don't forget, like this video if you really do enjoy it, hit subscribe, and ring the bell to receive more notifications. Let's get right into the news clip and then we'll expand on some of the points that I went over to help you if your dog is suffering from separation anxiety. And here's a question for you. Is your dog having a hard time with you returning back to work or going back to school? And if so, you are not alone. Here today to help us treat separation anxiety and even help prevent it, dog behavior consultant, Sarah Andreka. Sarah, thanks so much for being with us here. Let's start by just explaining kind of what this is for different dogs and how it maybe plays out, how you know if this is something that your dog could be dealing with. Absolutely. So you see a lot of separation-related problems, which means dogs don't like to or are no longer being comfortable being isolated or separated from others. And then you also see separation anxiety where they're afraid to or anxious about being away from one specific person in particular. And so they can exhibit a lot of frustrating behaviors because of that. Yeah, what what are the behaviors that you see leading up to it I guess because if you're not there, you know, you don't necessarily see them in action, but oftentimes what's the case is when you come back, you see the result of the fact that they were not happy that you were gone, right? Yeah, so if there's evidence that your dog has been panting and pacing, maybe you're finding saliva on the floor or scratch marks on your door like they've been trying to get out. If they're um, having other destructive behaviors like chewing up your shoes or other things that they don't normally chew up, any of these signs can be signs of separation anxiety or separation-related problems, and it shows you that your dog is really stressed when you're gone. Is this something that dogs, uh, you know, are, are certain dogs more prone to this than others? Are, are they born this way? Is this something that, that, that uh, comes about because of, you know, because you're gone for too long sometimes or things like that? Yeah, it, it really is dog to dog, and it's very, um, a lot of it is based on different breeds. Some breeds are more independent than others, and we spread them to be very close to us as domestic partners. So if they don't get that closeness or we don't have that equal balance of independent time as well, any dog can really develop something like this unless they have a just natural, very independent personality, which is very odd for most domesticated dogs. So it's something that we nurture in the environment more so than is natural for a dog, but mm -hmm. they become very close to us and bonded to us. So when they don't get adequate enrichment and adequate independent time, oftentimes you can see this start to arise, especially when there's a shift in schedule, like being home for an extended period of time when you're typically not. Okay, we're almost out of time, but we want to help people, of course, if this is something they're dealing with. What can we do? How can we help our dogs through this? Give your dog independent enrichment time. So things like snuffle mats, puzzle toys, and all enrichment means is the dog gets to make a choice and have a positive outcome. So give them independent time away from you when you're home. That's fun and a great activity for them to do. But then also give them lots of one-on-one -on -one time when you are home with them. Make sure they're getting 30 minutes of enrichment in the morning at least and 30 minutes of enrichment in the evening and that you're really tapping into those physical needs for them as well. Sarah Andreco, you are so good. Always the voice of reason here to help us with our pups. Thank you so much for the time. Have a great rest of your day. So that was the clip from Good Day Charlotte. And one of the questions that I got after that clip was about medical intervention. What about medicating my dog to help them through separation anxiety? And that's an excellent point. Unfortunately, we only got to cover so much, but I do wanna mention that if your dog is struggling with separation anxieties or is having some of the signs and symptoms that we talked about in the video clip, you should definitely consult your veterinarian to see if there are medications 
or even holistic supplements that you might be able to give to your dog during behavior modification while you're working with a behavior professional to help be a catalyst to getting them less anxious and on the path to healing from all of those anxieties and frustrations while you're gone. So definitely talk to your doctor, your primary care, or you can talk to a veterinary care behaviorist to see if medicine or even supplementation is a good idea with your behavior modification plan. Now separation anxiety and related problems is no easy process to work through. And this video is really just meant to give you a couple of quick things that you can do at home by yourself to help jumpstart things in the right direction. So a couple of quick tips for you. <laughs> One of the things that you can do is get a dog camera, an automated treat dispensing dog camera like the Furbo or the Wopet or the Canary so that you can see when your dog is getting anxious. Is it five minutes after you leave? Is it an hour after you leave? That can help you with a treatment plan to decide what you need to do and when and how do your work work, work with your dog through that. The other thing is physical activity. Just like we talked about having a play session ahead of time before you leave, it's really good to time your walks, your runs, your jogs, your bike rides, any physical activity before you leave so that hopefully your dog can rest well when you're not at home. And then the third tip that I wanna mention before we get into play and enrichment and independent time is noises, normalizing noises. Think about when you leave the house, oftentimes you turn off all of your electronics, you turn off the coffee pot, the TV, any music. And so the sounds are different when you're away versus when you're home. So start taking some of those sounds that are there and present when you are home and add them in when you're not home. If you listen to a specific radio station, then put that radio station on when you're gone for the day. If you don't typically have anything on and it's a very quiet household, you could also implement something like brown noise, but make sure you normalize it first. So play the brown noise while you're at home first several times for several days in a row and then start playing it while you're gone. Sometimes the sound enough can distract them from the outside environment and help calm and soothe them even more. Okay, so let's expand a little bit more on what I mean by play, by enrichment, and very importantly, independent time. And when I talk about play, what I mean is having a one-on-one -on -one session with your dog using one of the activities that they really enjoy playing with you. As you can see, Vinny here really likes his tug toy. So before I leave the house, in order to give him some of that fulfillment, that one-on-one -on -one time, I'm gonna pick one of his favorite games, like tug, and play it with him for a bit. Where'd it go? Maybe a little hide and seek in there too. Oh, tug, boy. Now in the game of tug, it's important that they get to win it every once in a while. So even though it's this back and forth and we're using all these muscles and we're pulling and tugging, at the end of this game, I'm gonna let him have this toy so he gets a win and he has a really exciting experience with it. But this really helps get some of that top level energy out before you leave the house. The important thing to know about enrichment are two very simple things. One, being that the dog gets to make a choice, and two, there's a positive outcome. So anything the dog gets to choose that has a positive outcome can be seen as enrichment. It's important also to have at least 30 minutes in the morning period and 30 minutes in the evening period every single day of something that's mentally enriching for your dog. So let's talk about and expand on some examples of what enrichment might look like. Got a couple of tools and toys over here for fun that Vinny is absolutely fond of. He finds them both positive and loves making choices involving them. The first one is a Kong. Really, really simple. Fill it with a little peanut butter, a little bit of baby food. I throw it in the freezer and then I give it to them. And they can play with it as long as they want and they get a positive reward, a food reward on the inside. You can see Vinny here has chosen the snuffle mat as his form of enrichment. These are fantastic little tools for them to seek and find, just really sending off those happy triggers in the brain and it's very mental satisfying for them to be able to play with something like a snuffle mat. Vinny will play tug with it too. Come here Vinny, let's put some treats in that for you. Ah, wait, drop, nope, drop, good, wait, sit, no, sit, good boy. You can see he's ready to go, he knows what this is all about, wait. So for a snuffle mat, all we're gonna do is take a little bit of Vinny's kibble here and I'm gonna spread it, ah, uh -uh, you wait. Wait, spread it, he needs a little impulse control too, throughout the sleeves of fabric to hide all the pieces in here so that he can seek and find them. Now, if you're not familiar with snuffle mats, they're super simple to make. In fact, I've got a video on how to do this home project. It's a great one to do over the weekend with the kids. <laughs> to wait, okay, eat. I'll put the link 
as to how to make snuffle mats in the description of this video below so that if you want to make one over the weekend and try it out with your dog and see how they enjoy this form of enrichment, it's really, really simple. So check that out, make one for yourself, give it to your dog and see what they think about it. But again, just as a reminder, it's anything that they can make a choice in and there's a positive outcome. The other option that I have here too are puzzle toys. These are lots of fun and um, there's a number of different puzzle toys that I really like and have used. You can see this one's gotten a lot of use in the past, but I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below to some of the puzzle toys that I get from Amazon that are pretty inexpensive and easy, but these can be really great forms of enrichment for your dogs too. For puzzle toys, you usually just put a little bit of their food, their regular kibble in there. You can use some high value treats if you want. But I'm really careful about how, much, how many treats per day that I give my dogs because I don't want to accidentally fatten them up with too many calories. So use their food if you use kibble. You can use fresh food in a lot of these puzzle toys as well. So what specifically do I mean by independent time? We just talked about enrichment and making their time away from you fun, but independent time really does mean time away from you. Not sleeping by your feet or sleeping in another room where they have access to you. But dogs need confidence in independence. So they need to learn that it's okay and they can have fun by themselves when you're not home. That makes it a lot easier for when you do need to leave the house if you give them independent time away from you when you are home. So for example, I'm here in my front room, which today it's kind of an overcast day, but Blue Ivy here absolutely loves to bathe in the sun. So if she's having some struggles with me being gone from the house, I might pick this room because it's one of her favorite spots in the house where she can have some fun and really enjoy being in here. But I'm gonna block off this room so that even though I'm home, she can't have access to me. Every once in a while, I'll come check on her, I'll throw another toy in, give her a reward for being a good girl by herself in her area. But it's very important to build confidence in your dogs and to give them that sense of independence to give them time away from you when you're home also. Now, if you're watching this video in the fall of 2020 when it was filmed and released, I'm actually getting ready to do a study to help dogs that suffer from separation anxiety and other separation related problems. The study is free and it's nationwide. So if you're interested in being a part of that study or enrolling your dog to see if some of the things that we're doing might potentially help your dog get through separation anxiety or separation related problems, I'm gonna put a link in the video description below. That'll take you to my site. It'll explain a little bit more about the study and you can sign up to potentially help your dog and maybe even be in a nationally published paper. If you're watching this video in the late spring, maybe 2021, don't worry, we're gonna update this description as well to include information about that study and a video behind it to show you the results. So hopefully we can help a lot of dogs out there that are struggling with this issue. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. Go ahead and hit subscribe and ring the bell to receive notifications when more helpful videos to build the bond between you and your dog are released just like it. Thanks so much for watching.